Hello and welcome to this video where we look at 11 pivot table tips in only 11 minutes. Let's go. Tip number one is to view the fields and areas section of the fields pane side by side. By default, they are in this stacked layout, but click in the gear icon in the top right of the fields pane and choosing side by side puts the areas to the side of the fields pane, making it easier when you're working with many fields of a table. Applying a report filter to a pivot table is really useful. And in this example, I have the region field used in the report filter, and I have four different regions. Maybe I want four separate reports, one for each region. To do that nice and easy, I come to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, then the drop down arrow next to Options on the far left, and Show Report Filter Pages. On doing that, it will ask me which report filter. I've only got one, it's a bit of a silly question right now. I click OK, and down the bottom, I have the four separate sheets, each one with the report filter applied. This next tip is stopping the auto fitting of columns. I have a pivot table showing product names and a slicer currently filtered to show meat poultry products only. If I change it to produce, produce has a product name that is larger. It is longer than some of the meat poultry names. So as I filter between the two, you can see column A keeps changing in width automatically. And because I've got a pivot chart underneath, that's also been affected by this. To stop that happening, I can right mouse click on the pivot table, go to pivot table options, and disable the setting to auto fit column widths on update. On confirming that, when I now switch between moat and poultry and produce, column A is no longer automatically adjusted. By default, pivot tables are shown in compact form layout. So in this example, I've got two different fields in the row labels area, and they are shown in the same column, column B. It's a common question for people to ask, how do we put them in separate columns? To do that, click within your pivot table, up to the design tab, and we have the option on the far left for report layout, and we can switch to either outline or tabular form. If I go for tabular form, that will show them in separate columns. Additional bonus tip on that, we can also go to the blank rows button above, and insert a blank line after each item if we like that appearance. Equally, we can go back and remove said blank item. Now, if we are applying settings such as disabling auto fit and changing layout to tabular form, we might be interested in keeping these settings as our default. To do this, we go to the File tab, down to options, into the data category, and to edit default layout. And we can come here and now start setting what we like. We can decide whether the subtotals are shown at the top of the group or below. We can switch off grand totals, include filtered items in totals. There's lots of good stuff here. We can even import an existing layout. You can see I'm in cell C7 at the moment of the pivot table that I switched to tabular form. So if I click import, it brings in the settings, as you can see with the tabular form there, into this window immediately. In addition to that, I can go to pivot table options and start playing around with some of the settings that you may know or that we have discussed in this video, such as auto fit column whips on update. On clicking OK to each of these, that is applied, and any new pivot table in this workbook only will have 
the default layout. So we can set default layouts. What about default styles? I've got a pivot table style applied to this pivot table. To set that as my default, I simply come up to the design tab, right mouse click on the pivot table style I'd like to set and click on set as default. Pivot tables have three key filters, the field filter, report filter, and slicer. And the field filter is one that doesn't get as much exposure, but it has some cool settings in there. One of them is the top end report. So if I come to the field filter here for customer, I want to set a top five. I come into value filters, down to top 10, and then specify what I'd like. Is it the top or bottom? Is it by item or percentage? For me, I'm changing 10 to five. I want the top five items by sales total. Click OK, that job is done, and I have a pivot chart connected to that table so that ultimately that's my goal, to have this top five customers pivot chart. Top end reports, easy with pivot tables. Talking about filters, how do you quickly remove all filters? In this pivot table, I have a filter on the first pivot table, a field filter applied to exclude the sales of coffee and juice. And then we have this slicer above that's applying a filter for Ireland. What if I'm not entirely sure what filters are applied? I just want to get rid of all of them that may be used on these pivot tables. Click on the pivot table and then the clear filter in the sort and filter group. Clicking clear from there removes all filters. With pivot tables, you can group any numeric field. So with this pivot table, I'm going to drag the total field into rows then right mouse click on one of the total values and look at group. In here, I want to group these totals to see how many sales we have made within different ranges of totals. I'm going to change the starting value to zero, leave the ending value to be automated and specify by 50. So in a ranges of every 50, uh, pounds as it may be, I want to see how many sales. Clicking OK, the groupings are created, 0 to 50 and so on. Currently the values area is doing the sum of the sales, so I'm going to right mouse click and summarise them by count, and now I've got how many sales for each of those groupings. Grouping fields in a pivot table is most commonly associated with date and time values, but it can be applied to any numeric value. So it's really useful for items such as age, exam scores, price ranges, and these kind of values as well. Quick tip, I've got two pivot tables. They both show a grand total. Doesn't really make sense to show it twice. I could produce that with a simple sum function on a cell of this report. So I want to remove them. Click on your pivot table, up to the design tab, and on the far left, grand totals, and I choose off. I can then go and set this for the other pivot table as well. And indeed, this could also have been controlled in the default layout tip that we saw earlier in this video. Final tip is the percentage difference from previous. I have this report with months and regions and a column on the end which I want to show the percentage variance from the previous month. To do this, right mouse click, show values as, percentage difference from, loads of other good stuff in here. I change the base field from region to months and leave the base item as previous although a quick look will show other options in there, such as month names. Clicking OK, that is applied. And in addition to seeing the revenue in column D there, I can now also see that percentage difference. 
So I can see that February was an 11% drop. And when I look at the next level down for Germany, I can see there was a 6.5% increase in revenue for the region of Germany. So I hope you found this video useful. 11 awesome pivot table tips. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you can keep in touch and be notified about the latest video tutorials. Take care, I'll see you again soon.